It's that time of the year again, folks. Time to go over my anime collection for the year 2024. As you can see, we've done this since 2016. Every year I took a look at the iconic Billy shelf in my collection. Now you're probably wondering why I'm doing this in September. Well, I got no real reason to do it other than September is my birthday month and I thought, hey, if I'm gonna highlight my collection, I might as well do it on my favorite month of the year. That's why. So with that out of the way, let's get started and show you the updated anime Blu-ray collection for the year 2024. The first title here is Berserk 1997, the complete collection put out by Discotech. This is a legendary series. This was actually my first exposure to Berserk. And then many years later, I read the manga and I fondly remember one of my uncles. He is a fan of the of this series of Berserk 97. And when I was, gosh, I don't know, 13, 14, something like that, I found either a VHS or a DVD copy of Berserk and he told me that I could not watch it because this is for adults. So for a really long time I grew up thinking like oh Berserk is something for adults not for teens and kids and whatnot. It's not a regular show so I can't watch it. Eventually I did and, and I realized oh you, you meant like all the violence and stuff. I get it. Even though this ends in a massive cliffhanger I still think this is one of the best representations of Berserk outside of the original source material. Highly recommend checking it out if you haven't. A very, very recent addition to the collection is Chihaya Furu Season 2 and 3. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Season 1. This was on sale for the Sentai Summer Sale. I was able to grab these for cheap. I think it was $25. Season 1 was going for $10 and I could not snag it in time. It sold out and I don't think I've seen it back in stock. And the people that are selling it on third party websites are asking a little bit too much. But I get it. It's a lot of episodes episodes per the disc and stuff so uh, eventually I will track it down and, and finish this set but Chihaya Furu even though I've not read the manga I've heard nothing but fantastic things about it and I love me some good sports drama and this fits the bill I can't wait to check it out hopefully I don't have to wait too long Duel Parallel Trouble Adventure. This is one of those classic underrated gems that I watched growing up. I believe this was aired on the Anime Unleashed block at Tech TV. Do you guys remember that? I sure do. I miss Tech TV. I wish it would exist, but it went under. And fortunately, one of the best memories about it was the Anime Unleashed Friday Night block, which I think aired for like two hours and it featured random series that you might not find on like Cartoon Network, Fox Kids, or Kids WB. Uh, so one of these is Duel. This series is set in the Tenchi Muyo universe. It is in continuity, but this deals with parallel universes, has some mech action, uh, some interesting characters here and there. Highly do recommend checking this out if you're a fan of the Tenchi verse. I'm certainly happy that this came out thanks to Discotech and it's even SD on BD. Eureka 7 High Evolution, the third and final film in the High Evolution trilogy. This is a mixed bag. A lot of people like it. I am somewhere in the middle. I am a huge fan of Eureka 7. If you did not know, Eureka 7 happens to be my all time favorite anime. I love that thing to death. And these movies, they're part of that universe that unfortunately has had so many ups and downs. These aren't the best representations of what the franchise can be unfortunately, but they do look pretty amazing. Animation wise, I do recommend checking them out. Unfortunately, the original series, which is still the best part of the franchise, is really pricey online. If you want to get one of the uh, complete editions, I don't see them reprinting this anytime soon, which is a shame because again, this is my all time favorite. I do have it on DVD and Blu-ray, but for newcomers wanting to get into the series, you can't even find it on streaming. You can find the high evolution stuff, but I really do not recommend this as an entry point. If you can find the original show, do that instead of watching this. But yeah, this finishes off the trilogy and I don't know, maybe I'll talk about it on one of my live streams over at Manga Geekdom Live. I do 
have a live stream channel if you're interested where we sort of goof off and talk about anime video games what have you but yeah Eureka 7 high evolution happy to have it on my collection regardless Food Wars, the third plate, or season three. Finally, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, gosh, I don't remember when I got season one and two. I think it was 2019 or 2018, something like that. And ever since then, I've been like, oh, I'll get the others soon, whenever they go on sale again at a Black Friday, because I got them for $10. That is insane. Unfortunately, I've never seen the other seasons, the other three, for dirt cheap. But for this Sentai summer sale of this year, I saw it going for, I think it was $24 and said, all right, screw it, I'll get it and just get that over with. <laughs> so now the long waiting game begins for season four and five, but I promise you it won't be such a long wait. I just gotta get it soonish, you know? IGPX, the complete collection. I've always wanted to own IGPX. A long time ago, I looked at the DVDs and thought about getting them, but I don't know, I just kind of forgot, I guess. I had other things in mind, other priorities. And thanks to Discotech, I finally now have IGPX in my collection. This is one of my fondest memories of watching Saturday Night Toonami and how it bled into Adult Swim Sunday morning. And I, I, I love this. This is the perfect combination of soap opera goodness, action adventure anime mixed with sports. I love the combination of mech racing in the future. It has an ensemble cast for the dub, which was pretty iconic back in the day. Again, as soon as I saw this announced, I was grinning from ear to ear and I knew that I had to have it. And here it is. Lupin the Third is another Food Wars situation here for the channel. I only have a handful of them. The idea was to collect most of the Lupin the Third stuff. Not a fan of the TV specials. I mean, they're fine, but I don't feel like if I get them, I'm not going to rewatch them. Similar to like uh, Detective Conan, Case Closed, where most of these movies, once you solve the thing and you watch it, are you really going to go back and check it out? For me, at least, that's a no. So I wanted to at least own the TV seasons or the parts, if you will. And I started by getting part four. I got the uh, Fujiko Mine series, which had the OVA spinoffs. And then I just completely forgot to get the other stuff. Picked up Lupin the Third part six, which was going for uh, somewhat of a decent price. I don't remember right now, but not super cheap either. And of course, Lupin Zero, which is a six episode ONA, sort of a, a backstory story on Lupin when he was a kid and I do want to go back and try and get part one on Blu-ray, part two on DVD, uh, part three and five. I do believe part five is out of print so that's going to be super annoying but we'll see what happens. Mob Psycho 100 Season 3, the finale. This was so amazing. I watched it as it aired uh, from, you know, the seasonal anime and they just did a phenomenal job on this show and I happily ponied up and got it on release. It's been such a long time since they were released that it's kind of wild to see the journey in between sets and all the crazy stuff that has happened in my life and that I guess sort of is reflected on the journey that Mob goes through in his big action-packed adventure that happens in the show. Another Sentai release that I wanted to grab for ages, ever since I saw Parasite on Adult Swim, I really enjoyed the series. I'm not big on the manga, but again, I do like the show. And here it is, Parasite the Maxim, the complete collection. Unfortunately, Sentai releases are the worst releases when it comes to standard Blu-rays. Yeah, they do a good job with the collector's editions. They pack in a lot of cool stuff and whatnot, and their prizes aren't like Aniplex levels, but the standard discs are are terrible. You just get the disc and uh, the jewel case with nothing inside. It's all blank. Just pretty boring. If you could at least add a slip case, if you could add a, a paper insert inside or, or something to spice it up or reversible cover art, that really goes a long way for us anime collectors and fans. Unfortunately, uh, they don't do that. They just throw that in there as cheaply as possible and charge you a lot of money for it. But if you wait enough for the famous Sentai sales, you're going to grab them for cheap. And that's what I did here. 
speaking of cheap, let's keep going. We got Space Brothers number zero. This is the prequel to the series. It's a movie and it sort of sets up the characters that you know for Space Brothers, the, the anime. I really enjoy this series and I've been waiting to at this and I think I got it for 10 to $15, something crazy inexpensive. The Visions of Escaflone. I got the Classics Editions. This was a Funimation release, I think. Uh, finally owned this. I remember watching it on TV back in the day. I don't think I watched everything or I don't remember the entirety of the plot. So I've been wanting, I've been itching to get this because Escaflone is one of the landmarks, the benchmarks of anime uh, with the mechanical designs, the character designs, and, and just the overall animation and aesthetic that I think it, it is worthy to be on the shelf as one of those important releases, you know? Super happy to get this. It's not the most exciting release because I know they did some sort of Kickstarter or crowdfunding thing and there was a, a deluxe edition that had uh, more trinkets and looked much better, but I'm happy with this. I believe in a previous video I talked about uh, some of the Urusei Yatsura Blu-rays. This was such an expensive endeavor. <laughs> I, I get it. It's 50 something episodes or close to 100. I don't know. It, there's a lot of episodes per set and you're going to charge a lot of money for that. I, I believe it was uh, 50 to $60 per set, which adds up pretty quickly because it's four of the seasons plus the OVA set, which I have here as well. But I'm happy to have Urusei Yatsura in the collection. One of my favorite Rumiko Takahashi creations. Unfortunately, I don't have the movies. One of them, and I'm blanking on the name, I do apologize, is horribly out of print and super expensive. And from what I've seen online, Discotech is not getting that license again in a while. So it's not, it, it's out of my hands. And I don't feel like collecting a series of movies to be missing one and then be frustrated about it. I'd rather just not get them. <laughs> and I'm fine owning the TV show instead, as well as the OVA set. But next to it is the Sentai release of the Urusei Atsura reboot, which I thought was phenomenal. I I really enjoyed it. The animation is beautiful on it and it really does capture the essence and charm of the original in a, you know, brand new way with modern anime techniques and art styles and stuff that uh, I think will appeal to a lot of newcomers. Whereas, you know, the original, even though some of uh, the, a good chunk of the original was well animated, some of the episodes down the line maybe aren't as crispy as you would like. <laughs> but yeah, we have here the the first half of the reboot for Urusei Atsura. Yu Yu Hakusho, this was released for the anniversary edition, and I believe this is the reprint of that. It sold out extremely quickly last year, 2023, and then by uh, December of that year, or close to January of this year, it came back at a restock for cheap, and by cheap I mean like a couple 20 or 30 dollars less, not like something super dramatic. And I was able to grab it, so really happy about it. I love Yu Yu Hakusho, that's one of my favorite Shonen Jump series, and the anime is just as legendary for me as watching Gundam and, and Dragon Ball Z back in the day, so really happy to own this. I wish it had the movie, but I'm fine with what we have. Looks really good too. I love this box set design, even though I'm not huge on box sets, I'm happy to have this. And I'm going to slow down the footage here for you guys. One of the bigger updates for the collection is the fact that I took out all the DVDs and stored them away in a closet and some storage bins. They're easily accessible, so it's not like I'm never going to see them again. I just thought, you know, let's bring back all the anime films that I have and stick them in here because, you know, this is the Blu-ray Billy shelf for my anime collection. I didn't want them to be in a separate shelf with other movies. So now everything's here. The only DVDs I kept are the Tenchi Muyo stuff, which is what I'm currently collecting DVD wise. And I actually do want to marathon the whole thing. So I'm only missing three or four releases for the Tenchi stuff. 
So there it is, folks. That is the update for the anime Blu-ray collection in the year 2024. Now, what's awesome is that all these companies keep putting out cool stuff, and I am pretty sure I will be grabbing a ton of them. So the next update video will surely be just as cool and awesome, if you ask me. That's going to be it for now. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, following, whatever you want to call it. Thank you for being a part of Bonga Geekdom here on YouTube. I truly do appreciate it. I don't talk about anime these days but i was happy to bring this video back it's a yearly tradition for the channel i had to do it thank you so much once again god bless stay safe out there i will catch all of you on our next video